just yet. So, if you don't claim it by the end of this map, then we may give it to the second person, complete with some extra additional items such as that AWP Pit Viper. But for now, Dennis starts the proceedings by shooting Kucha straight in the head. Kucha's not going to be happy with that. We saw him get actually a tiny bit aggressive in the chat saying to the Pentagons, come on, go, 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 hurry up. We want to get this last map started. So to find his head knocked off there in round number one, it's not exactly going to be what he wanted, but it looks like the bomb's actually going to be uh, boosted up the top here, and they're going to try and get that control over mid, which as you pointed out earlier on, is pretty darn important. They're going to also smoke off uh, main... Uh, over towards middle Z, as some people like to call it as well. Very different call-outs for that area, but I'm liking this position here from Spiddy, just hiding on the edge of the smoke to see if he can catch any T players out, and he, he is going to be able to find one. I do believe the Strugs gets knocked out there, but in comes the push over towards the A-bomb site. Okay, still in position there, just emerging now, and gets another frag onto Adren. Angel going to be the last one standing, caught while he's reloading by Dennis emerging from mid, and I think we might have seen a bit of a teabag there to boot on the first round of this pistol, so all kinds of shenanigans going on. Important round for Penta. Let's see, gonna see a late buy from them. Bison coming out for Strugs. Let's have a look at what kind of Bison. See if he's a respectable man, got himself a battle squad or not. So we have uh, quite the eco here from Hellraisers. Just the Tech 9 on Flamey, P250 on Dozier, not much else to speak of. Buys an antique. I like his style. Nice. man has got swag. But uh, here we go into round number two. No initial indication about what, where the bomb could eventually be heading, although they have got a lot of presence over towards A main indeed. Mid control in full for the CTs by the looks of things. And there's only going to be one player challenging over there, which will actually be Angel. But here we go. Looks like they're going to make their way over towards the A-bomb site now. Speedy's going to get caught out here, but that Bison's going to get one. It gets two indeed. Strugs with two huge frags before Flamey eventually responds. But it's going to be a quick cleanup here by the looks of things. Three Thamas kills in quick succession here for Penta, securing their first anti-eco win. And round number two for them here on Cash. Hashtag respect the Bison. I'm going to upgrade to those Thamases, to those M4s. Galil's AK is coming out for the Hellraiser side, of course. They are going for that four spy on round three here to kick things off. Not going to want to allow an extra eco for the CTs to build up that bank. They want to break it as soon as possible. Dren with a passive position there. You can see he's just shooting uh, quite high through the smoke. That's because there are boxes there where the CTs can uh, jump onto behind that smoke. So he's pre-firing to make sure if anybody's there, they do get eliminated before they push forward and make a mistake. Both teams quite spread out on the map at the moment. As you can see, we've got Dennis in the vent area. Next is going to be the de facto B player as Crystal is going to try and hold down mid. So suddenly emerging T is going to shoot Crystal down to 21 HP while wow, he has a nade in his hand, which is... Uh, Definitely not what he was looking for. Dennis going to get a bit aggressive, overextend as it gets punished by Dozier, just waiting for a mistake to be made. 40 seconds on the clock, though, and Hellraisers have a deci decision to make. There's only going to be Strugs left alive on that A-bomb site as he's being circled there before Spiddy does come in and start to rotate. Actually, he's just going to stick himself over towards CT spawn there by the looks of things. But in comes the push from the T, so now comes the rotate. So she's going to be able to get one before Strugs uh, actually takes down a Dren there by the looks of things. So that's all going to be left in a two versus four situation here. The bomb's been planted, and by the looks of things, I think Pence are taking the sensible decision and just backing away and saving that M4 and that FAMAS, which they have in hand. Crystal very low on only 21 points of health there, but considering the fact that Hellraisers did in fact go for that early bite, that was already an important round for them to pick up here. And that's what I love you know, about CSGO. Some people class it as just what happens in the late rounds that can contribute to uh, the result at the end of the match. But things like these early round wins here in round number three can be pretty darn crucial. Crystal gave the game away there. But Quick on the trigger finger, didn't get the frag. And a little thing to point out there was we saw Angel remained on the boost spot as the push came in uh, successfully onto the A-bomb site. He was just basically uh, cutting off the rotation through mid up a slope to give the Hellraiser team one less uh, position to worry about. So they only had to focus pretty much on uh, car because obviously he had the rotation through a main and a door as well. So good positioning there 
paid off for Hellraisers, and they are going to go straight towards a main, as they are expecting something of an eco from the CT side. They may not be aware that there are that many CTs on the site, but it won't matter really as they take them all out, two remaining, versus four. See if Dennis can get a frag to even things up, and indeed he will. Two frags! Now, all of a sudden, this is winnable for Penta. They do have a kit on next. He is joining Dennis from the mid area. Angel, they're going to get the jump on Dennis while he has a nade in his hand. Flamey on 6 HP, but gets the frag anyway, using the element of surprise there, hiding behind the pillar. So, started to go a bit sour for Hellraisers early on after that plant, but they managed to eke out the win with two surviving. And what's that going to do now to the economy of Penta once again? We saw them with a kind of like a, an awkward bite. It looked like in the round number f uh, round number four, even sorry. But now they're just going to be on an eco. We've got two P250s, only one smoke grenade and one flashbang, both in the hands of Crystal. As we go into round number five, so this should, all things according to script, go in the favour of Hellraisers once again here. But I'm liking Strugs. They're pushing you aggressively, just seeing if he can get any information from A main, seeing if he can spot anybody. But have a look at this from Spitty. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. He's made his way right through Squeaky, and he is going to be able to find a couple of players there, but he's actually not taking advantage of that. He's got the bomb as well. Have a look at that. Just see in the corner of your radar there, Spitty has all the information. He's like a Kuriakin in Mission Impossible right now. I'm talking to Man from Uncle, in fact. <laughs> I'm old school, very old school, showing my age right now. Five versus one. Spitty had a lot of information there, but wasn't able to do anything with it. Obviously, the first frag he gets, suddenly he'll have the whole team on his back. So he wanted to make sure he made the right frag, ideally one where he could pick up the weapon and mount more of an offense. But the opportunity did not arise for him, and it will be next to field some kind of uh, assault on the remaining players, as he literally has nothing to lose here. Nothing to lose. As he's going to spot one player just in mid behind the box there. He is going to get taken down with 14 points of health. No, he's actually going to back away there. But he's eventually going to get spotted. Kutcher will finish him off with the AK-47. And for the first time on cash, we, still hell, we see sorry, Hellraisers with the round advantage. So 3-2 is going to be the score. Of course, now because Penta have saved, they are going to be able to buy here. Crystal once again going for the AWP. And, you know, one thing about cash is that I have to say you don't really see too many teams utilizing an AWP on the T side of it on a very often occasion. That's just from what I've seen on cash sometimes. But uh, we'll see if Crystal can do any damage with it on the uh, CT side here. Okay, so let's have a look at where Crystal is playing with the AWP. He is, of course, going to be playing mid, at least for now. See if he chooses to rotate his position, or can be useful rotating between the A site and mid as well. But often you may want a second person for that. Possibly somebody looking from T vents. Again, seeing many slow rounds here from both sides. It's a bomb commonly being left in this area for Horizons, as we saw when Spiddy was there on the eco. Boost coming in in mid, but we'll not find anybody to engage. Strugs is below this boost. They have that crossfire that we saw from uh, the teams yesterday. I believe it was no problem the Norwegian team who played this kind of crossfire very strongly indeed. And again, just like, look how slow the rounds are coming in here for both teams. I think we may have the smokes incoming. Let's have a look at how they push the site. Crystal not having any of it from these tees. He hasn't been smoked off and he is going to do some damage here. He is, as Crystal is going to get a second frag down to Kucha. This push onto the A bomb site being shut down in quick fashion here from the German Penta squad. Dossi is not even going to be able to find a kill whatsoever there. All five players left alive. Strugs left on two HP. Angel will eventually get one, but he's not going to get any more as Dennis finishes him off. And once again, we are back all even here. 3-3 three, three is the score going into round number seven. Because Hellraisers did win uh, three in a row, I do believe. They are going to be able to buy it once again here. Plenty of money in the bank. And I said about how sometimes you don't really see the AWP utilised too much on the T side of cash. Well, Kucha's proving me wrong because he's got one in hand. Okay, so let's see how Kucha is going to use it. Looks like he's going to try and get a fast pick on B. And he gets a perfect angle here. Looks like Kucha's been secretly AWPing unbeknownst to stream watchers as uh, there was always a more dominant AWP on the Hellraiser's side. Adren, passive position in A main, looking for a potential push from the CTs, possibly with a flash, uh, which is, can be common there. 
just to try and even things up, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. Again, we have the crossfire in mid, but Hellraisers seem to be content, not really contesting mid at the moment. Three rounds on their side at the moment. They're going to go for a fake towards A. However, Struggs may be in a position to hear that. And you can see he gets the timing smoke in there. However, the previous smoke was dissipating. We have a push towards the vent, but uh, he's going to run straight into next. And that will be an indication of the uh, intention of the terrorists. Their game has been caught out, unfortunately, for them. They are still stats over here towards the uh, B-bomb site, and Adren and Dushia are going to open things up, leaving next the last one after life. He will respond, leaving himself now in a one versus three situation. He's in mid, as you can see, but that bomb's going to be making its way over towards B. And unfortunately, I don't think, however hard he may try, he's going to successfully be able to pull off this one versus three. The bomb's still not been planted, but as soon as I say that, it does, in fact, go down. And he's a, he played well in vents earlier on. He got the information for the rest of his team that they were going to be, in fact, pushing towards beat. But unfortunately, the entry frags came in from Hellraisers, leaving next now the last one left alive. So he's going to save that AK-47, rightly so. He's got grenades, head armor, and a kit as well on his back to save. And once again, we're going to see Hellraisers with the round lead here. So this is looking good for them. But, uh, you know, I have to say... We saw Hellraisers play Inferno earlier on. They started on the T side, which is the less favoured side. They managed to rack up seven rounds, which really, in all honesty, is more than enough, and still Penta won. So even though Hellraisers are already on four rounds and are starting to do some good work on the less favoured side here on Cash, I'm still not going to call it that that could potentially be the key to them winning the map, because we saw earlier on in Inferno that it just wasn't the case. Back and forth the rounds go. Hellraisers with a one round advantage and a little bit of money in the bank. This is pretty much a disaster for Penta at the moment. Of course, the CT side being very favoured. Cash is a map where the CTs can take 10, 12 rounds and they are one round down with seven rounds in the bag on this map. So they're not going to be happy with this so far. And again, they've got no money in the bank whatsoever. So if they lose this round, they are going to be in dire straits. That will be uh, putting it lightly. Next, going to try and abuse this gap in the smoke to try and find a frag. Almost takes down Kucha. Kucha left with 11 HP. 4, 5 to 2 now. And Pentar, no choice but to try and save these weapons and do what little they can with them in the following round. Really not starting to sit pretty here for Penta. Hellraisers have turned on the aggression and it's working for them. They're getting some nice entry frags. They're getting control of the bomb sites, and they're successfully able to convert from there. So Crystal's got to be careful now. Both of those players are together, so if they do get caught out, and it's not going to play very pretty for them whatsoever. It's crucial that they hold onto these all-important rifles, but uh, Angel's going to have something to answer about that. He's going to find one, but Spiddy will shut him down there, so just a bit of... Uh, Revenge coming in here from the CT German side. They are able to hold on to those two rifles, but unfortunately, the economy for the rest of their squad is absolutely dire here. And that's going to mean Hellraisers now have a two round advantage as we go into round number nine. The Germans. I haven't said that once actually. Really? Is on that face a usual TV? Thing I've never said the Germans. But I feel like I should have said it at least once, so there it is. <laughs> Crystal has left the building on this fast eco here from Penta, trying to. Well, shock on aura, it seems like, but those is will fall. The rifle on Penta will fall. It's going to be picked up by Dennis, as you can see there. has a flashbang as well, so could uh, get into the mix of that. However, nobody is anywhere near him right now. Hellraiser's being very passive, and De Dennis is emerging slowly. If Adren can find an angle on Dennis, as he will, then that will pretty much put a stop to Penta here. They are miles away from the two rifles that are on the floor on the map right now. You can see Strugs running towards mid to try and find some action. Find some action he will. Angel low on health there, 13 HP, but has the angle to surprise drugs before he knows what hit him. Clean round pretty much for Hellraisers. They won't mind one person dying there. A few quite tagged, but uh, that's all. So 6-3 in favor of Hellraisers. Penta will bring out a buy again, which will leave them with no money in the bank afterwards. So this is uh, just going bad to worse right now and Herres is putting themselves in a great position to glide through this map on the CT side. 
And we go round number 10, it will be, it looks like the split's going to be coming in, favouring A at the second. We've only got one player, which will actually be Dosia over towards the B-bomb site at the second. And a heavy presence here from the CTs over towards mid. Spitty's going to start things off there and get Flamey through the door, actually, by the looks of things there. So that is going to make him a very angry terrorist. But we can see one player who I believe is stacked up in vents, which will be Dennis. Uh, and we've got one on short which is Strugs as well. So making sure that they can try as best as they possibly can to remain in control of mid, which, as we should all know, is a crucial area on a map like Cash. Okay, so again, a slow start to another round here. Let's have a look at this CT position. Dennis is just holding a pop flash as Dozier is looking for someone to shoot in the face. Meanwhile, in mid, we have Crystal almost completely smoked off by these terrors. Has to be aware of the mid entrance and boost spot as well and there's Kuta just running out and shooting him in the face for fun it seems four versus four now Pensar gonna have potential rotation here next was gonna go towards mid but after Dennis spots Dozier he will just stay around the B bomb site in case there's a stack and it will be Spiddy watching mid from A instead. Now we see the T start to emerge. It's going to be Angel first. Spiddy gonna get the better of him. They don't know where the bomb is right now and Kucha is in mid with the AWP 22 HP, Adren going towards A now with the bomb. Has we'll have uh, CTs on either side, and that's going to be a very easy frag indeed for Strugs. Now let's have a look at what Kucha plans to do here. Two seconds remaining. He's going to die after the clock. It seems unless he's lucky. He's not lucky. Gets one frag as he goes down, and that's going to be an, an AWP in the hands of Penta. And again, they won around, but look at the cash on him. That mm. AWP is going to be all important. Goes straight over to Crystal. That will allow him to save a little bit of money. So. Hellraiser still able to buy, although, yeah, they are going to have that fourth AK-47 there for Dosia eventually getting in his hands. They are able to buy, but still their money is not sitting too pretty, and it's really close between these two squads. Hellraisers are having a good T-side here, which is exactly what they do want, being the less favoured side, but still, you cannot count Penta out if you've been watching the series so far. It's certainly been close. We even went to a second overtime on the first map, which was Mirage, earlier on this evening. It feels like ages ago now, though, that we saw that overtime. It feels like quite a while we've had some good Counter-Strike action since. But heavy presence over towards mid for Hellraisers. Just getting control, seeing if they can find any aggressive pushes coming from the CTs. But they're not the time to do that. Angel will get boosted up here to see if he can find anybody in mid. But uh, what do you think about this passive play on mid here coming in from Penta? Well, actually, I'm just really curious to see what this nade does that Dennis keeps holding on that angle. But we may not see it. Anytime soon. Okay, there it is. So it is essentially uh, a pop flash off the corner of that area, which I can't show you with my mouse right now, but you can see where it's crossed the hairs. He's doing it again. That's a great pop flash there by Dennis. Almost gets two frags out of it. In he fact, does. he will. I am going to steal that one. Thank you very much. Frags come in from Crystal now. That orb may be the game changer for Pentar, but Dennis has done fantastic work holding towards B. So there's a little flashbang for you guys to learn, which will allow you to uh, go for a pop flash peek on your own if you're holding checkers as a CT. And again, we cannot uh, underestimate the value of those two frags by Dennis. It's allowed Pentar to win that round with minimal damage. The AWP survives as well, which is all important. Now we see Hellraisers with four rifles and a CZ. Angel going to be left with only a measly little pistol in hand, so he is not going to be happy with that. But all of the presence from the TVs is going to be heavily over towards the A bomb site right now. And actually, the CTs are going to get aggressive over towards A main as well, by the looks of things. So this is just going to be an absolute cluster over here towards the A bomb site. In go the kills, heavily in favor of the CTs here, and a clean sweep in a matter of no time whatsoever. No casualties here for Penta. Evening things up to six on six. And Hellraiser, you know, that almost looked like Hellraiser's won an eco, which they definitely were, and they had four rifles, but Penta just cleaned them up before they even had time to react. Indeed, they're going to be on eco now, and Penta may swing things back towards a 9-6 here on the CT side, which would be uh, much better than things were looking earlier on in this half. And that's still doable for both teams here. Crystal putting in yet more work, but the Rec 9 is real, and Dennis will fall. See, the CTs have immediately all rotated over to the B bomb site. Strug's going to push through the vent, get a frag, retreat, and that's going to take the attention of both T's. He's just going to Rambo them both, which is uh, looks a bit crazy when they're both aiming at him, but that's how it goes sometimes. Lots of money now for Pentar. Things looking starkly different to how they were previously. Kucha going all in on the AWP. He is naked, no armor to speak of. Glass cannon, it is. 
going to be for that man. This is a crucial round here. Round number 14 it is Hellraisers. No matter really even if Penta take these remaining few rounds here in the last first half. That's a nice pick there onto Crystal to start things off. But uh, yeah, on that point, Hellraisers are going to be happy no matter what really, to be quite honest, that they've got six rounds here. But with the way that they've been playing in the early rounds, they will have wanted to get more out of this. Suddenly Penta have turned up the game though, and they've been able to get the round advantage lead here over the, uh, the T-Squad. So the first pick goes in favour of Hellraisers to start things off here. And they are going to get some more attention going over towards B by the looks of things in Dosia and Kutcher with that AWP as well. So no AWP in play here for the CTs as Crystal has gone down. But with one minute left on the clock, it looks like it's going to be a B split. I haven't seen that many pushes through mid from Hellraisers, but look at the, the amount of rounds. They seem to enter it later on rather than contest it early. This time, though, next is going to dominate that position and the vents as well. Brings things back to three versus three. However, he will finally fall to Kucha. And uh, these trades are going as neck as neck as these rounds are. Two versus two. All in the hands of Kucha as opposed to uh, Crystal, who is dead in this round. So, let's see who this goes in favour of. Kucha has spotted one of them. Nade coming in from the second one, yet unknown. Nade going to do a bit of damage. Trades yet again. Down to 1v1. Kucha will not win on this occasion. Penta bring it 8 to 6. Looking good for 9. Let's have a look at the CT, sorry, T economy. Again, they're going to be able to go for pretty much a full buy this round as they did get the plant. So that's an extra $800 per person. They won't be able to afford the AWP on this occasion. But outside of that, they're going to have AKs. They're going to have nades. I've got to give it up to Spiddy there. He picked up some crucial frags in vents and then was even able to pick up a player whilst he was only left on 20 points of health on the B-bomb site there. So great awareness from him, great frags. And that helped secure the round there for the German squad of Penta. So here we go, we are into the uh, last round of the first half here on Cash. Crystal, just before getting smoked off, takes out an Angel to start things off here. So already, once again, looking favorable here for Penta. And if they can convert this to a 9-6 score and then potentially take the pistol afterwards, you never quite know. They could finish off Hellraisers, though. We will see. It's certainly been a close series from what we can see so far. And I think, James, all things considered, it looks like this could potentially be a very, very close game three as well. Indeed, it could. Now, look at the movement of Hellraisers. They have taken over the Checkers area. They're smoking lower CT. We have a push from a CT. That's going to be... Uh, let's have a look. That's going to be Dennis, in fact, with support from Next. Dennis getting two frags. He has been a beast in that Checkers area, even when the T's are occupying it. I'm not sure if the bomb will come up on the CT radar as it was in the smoke, but no matter. 9-6 it is. So Pentar eking out a good CT half after a terrible start. Going to go straight into the second half here as I don't know what time it is in Kazakhstan right now, but the sun is probably blazing through Adren's window at this point. It's about half past five in the morning, I do believe. If it was about an hour ago that they said it was half past four, it should be half past five now. You are a mathematical genius. That's amazing, isn't it? I only got a C in maths, GCSE, so don't blame me if I I would have given wrong. you a C plus. Thank you. I appreciate that. If only you were my invigilator at I'm that not, time. I'm not that old, <laughs> fortunately. So let's see how this pistol goes. Again, it's all quiet. Every round so silent here. Very, very slow play. It's very interesting. There are two Dennis's, two notable Dennis's in Counter-Strike and the Swedish one. Likes to charge up into mid on the T side, especially on the buy round, and just blast the AWP at people, but not so much seen that so far. See if Penta have a different approach when the buy rounds come in, but for now it's the pistol. And safety in numbers is going to take control of the A site. You have Angel just trying to stay alive in the car area. More T's coming to try and take him out. Dren trying to mount an offense and help out an Angel who's currently on 4 HP. Dren taking down Dennis again using the range on that USPS. And Flamey putting in some work as well. One man disadvantage for the CTs. And again, again Dren is very low on health versus uh, three players. But again, not that much health going on either. But Penta will find a headshot and an assist. And it will take the pistol round. And now, Pentar could use the momentum here and run away with this match. Do you reckon they will? Or do you reckon Hellraiser stand a chance? They are on the more favoured side here, but obviously Pentar now have got powerful rifles. If, but, you know. if Hellraiser's win the buy round, they could easily win every round after that. Well, not yeah. easily, but uh, it's, it's a viable thing that could actually happen, basically. It's all going to come down to economy. 
anything can happen. That's why we love CS. We've mentioned it before, and we will mention it again. So Crystal, although Penta did win the pistol round, of course, he's just going to try and save up for that all-important AWP for him. We've seen what damage he can do with it, so he's just going to go down to a Tech-9. But we know, again, what damage that can do. And the stack coming in over towards the A bomb site here is not going to pay off for Hellraisers whatsoever, as there hasn't even been a bullet shot yet. Now there has been, as Kutcher finds them all over towards the B bomb site, but in comes the quick rotation. And, uh, well, they're not even going to quickly rotate. They're just going to go through Squeaky and kind of have a chat over there by the looks of things. So uh, Penta are easily going to be able to take this round, but... Uh, Oh, yeah, it's because they've all got sure. armor. That's ah, why. that's It's why. not worth them retaking it. So they're going to have a meeting of the minds here instead. And, wow, I didn't even know that you could I was could just about to there. say, I didn't know that. I mean, generally speaking, there isn't really going to be a purpose for it unless you're ecoing, sorry, saving in that room. Learn something new every day. It's the Penta team starts to snake out of the B bomb sites. Strugs, I don't know why he was standing there. And he is dead for no reason, as is Crystal. He was just like standing like 10 yeah. meters from the bomb. I don't know why he was standing there. Look. He had teammates much further advanced than he was. So it's getting late, I think. Yeah, that's uh, slightly weird. Now they have a FAMAS. Sorry, FAMAS, a Galil. And uh, Crystal ecoing for the AWP. Alrighty then. Another eco coming out for Hellraiser. Flamey going to get the first flag onto Dennis. Doing great damage here in mid. Take getting next as well. Crystal, 16 HP. This round has fallen apart in all of 10 seconds for Penta. And all thanks to the CZ75. Three frags for the CTs, three frags for the CZ75 taking out those players. But still, it's not over quite yet. Speedy's going to respond to even things up into a two-on-two. -two. But Speedy's got to be very careful because he's only left on 14 HP. He's going to get caught out there to the hands of Angel, leaving Strugs to the last one left alive. He's got a couple of flashbangs there, which are going to go down. Not going to find anybody, though, initially. And Angel and Doshi up pushing in together. He's got his, uh, he's got his eye sorry, on Heaven, but they know exactly where he is. He's going to find one. He's not going to be able to find the second. And that's going to be an eco win coming in here for Hellraisers, mainly thanks due to your favourite weapon, James, the CZ75. You have to wonder, though, if they didn't if they didn't have two players needlessly die on the B bomb site to the explosion, literally for no reason, mm. then you have to wonder, would Crystal have had just a pistol? Would he have bought the AWP? I mean, it may be that he chose not to because he's against an eco, but, I mean, he may have bought it straight away. And... Who, who knows what would have happened? Well, have I suppose clear. I suppose if you if you run that situation ten times, they're probably going to win around seven eight times. Yeah. Out of ten anyway. So well, there we go. Talking about orbs, Crystal still decided to go for one. He's going for one glass cannon style. No armor for him, of course. That means and Spiddy actually has got the uh, scout. So interesting buy coming in. You don't really see that too often, in my opinion, on the T side here of Infern uh, on cash. Sorry, it is definitely getting late indeed. But whatever decides to work for you guys. Uh, we will see Crystal just on boost as you were actually on top of the um, the van at the back there to see if he can find any players. And Cooch is going to see if he can spot anybody as well just before he smokes out uh, mid main there, not allowing any T players through soon. So, with one minute left on the clock, no casualties in round number 19, although action seems to be going down towards the A bomb site as Dennis starts things off against Kutcher. Okay, so he is going to take a back seat for now as Penta will emerge with other players. The flank is coming in, though, from Adren, and the fact he hasn't seen anybody yet is going to make the rest of the CTs rotate over to the B-bomb site, sorry, A-bomb site. So they're going to have uh, a stronger hold than they otherwise may have with these rifles. And as Penta wait longer and longer and longer, they have a, fl they have a flank of their own coming in from mid, but Adren has a flank of his own coming in from A main, and that's going to be the first frag. Bomb is down now for the T's. Two versus two, make that two versus one. Next, the only one remaining, and Hellraiser's pulling themselves back into this match here. Got the AWP on Flamey as well, who I'm sure will throw it over to Kucha. And things are getting interesting here. So many trades back and forth, both in kills, both in rounds. Certainly a close game for certainly a very close series. So Penta going to be punished for not able to uh, convert that push onto the A-bombs right there, and they're just going to be down two pistols. No armor, just a flashbang in the hands of Dennis. A couple of tech knives and a couple of deagles as well. Kutcher's going to get knocked down to about 70 HP there, and we already see a Dren down to 14, thanks to that uh, 
Uh, Tech 9, but Flamey's going to come in, pick up two quick kills in a row as uh, 1D comes in there onto Adren to finish him off. Eventually was already low, but it's 3 versus 3 as things stand. They do have control of the B-bomb site initially, although Kutch is going to shut down next, who did pick up an M4A1 into his hand. The bomb's not been planted. Angel is going to be aware that there could be a play coming through mid. He's going to find him, leaving Strogs now, the last player left alive. With only four points of health, he's going to get taken out by the AWP of Kutcher there. And there's only two rounds the difference now here. Penta did take the pistol round and looked strong to be able to take cash here until suddenly Hellraiser's once again decided to wake up. And as we said, two rounds difference, so this could still go either way. All right. As Chewie said, it is a two-round deficit only now for Hellraiser's. Kutcher looking sharper and sharper with this AWP as well. Great to see on this new Hellraiser's lineup where there was initially definitely a question mark on the uh, orping ability of this new lineup, but question no more as he is doing fantastic work with this right now. But again, on a, on a, on a lineup with uh, Simple and then Markolov, it's uh, not often you're going to be able to pull out the orp yourself. That said, both men have left the building and now it's down to Kucha with the big green gun, and he is doing work. He is doing well. We've also seen Angel do some work with it as well, so, you know, it's pretty impressive. You've got to say from the Hellraiser squad, there certainly shouldn't be any more questions about orping ability after this best of three. But away from that, let's get back into the action. We are in round number 21. 50 seconds left on the clock. In comes the entry frag onto the B-bomb site for Crystal as he takes down Adren. But Flame in a lovely position here. He's going to take down one. Will he take down two? Yes, he will indeed. Left on only three points of health before he tries to challenge there with the USP in hand. It's not going to quite work out for him, though. But he's allowed some time for the rest of his to try and rotate here. Crystal gets another frag, so that's going to mean things are in a two-on-two -two situation. And Dosia up here at the top of heaven is going to see that they are going to be able to get that bomb down. And it's actually a fake plant coming in there from Crystal, that looked like. But with 20 seconds left, they've got to get that bomb down, and they've got to do it oh, soon. Oh, he's in trouble now. Yeah. He's in a lot of trouble now because he's going to have to plant the bomb here. And he's going to go for both frags, but the trade is going to come in from Hellraisers. I think he should have just planted the bomb there. And uh, he's going to regret that. No $800 bonus either. If they buy now, they're looking at Galil's. They're looking at, I don't even know what for Dennis. He's got $2,600. So that was, uh, that was not good for Penta. Hellraiser certainly aren't going to be complaining, though, as we head into round number 22. And once again, the German side are going to be forced down to only use those pistols. We'll see if they do get aggressive, but they're already firing shots with those pistols, so that should indicate to the Hellraiser squad that this is going to be an eco buy here. And so it starts with Dosia taking down Dennis to start off this round. The bomb's making its way up towards a, a main kind of area, I do believe, but they are going to be backing away over towards mid. Spiddy is going to be trying to see if he can get some information there as he smokes off that uh, nice little area there over towards the CT spot. It did actually land a bit too close for comfort, really, though. If you can try and get that just to the left a bit, it will land right in that door frame there. It's not really going to matter too much, though, in the grand scheme of things, as it will all be left up to Strugs and Crystal. They get knocked down quickly. And uh, James, we are even in maps, and we are even in rounds. If you want to know how to correctly smoke off that area, have a look at face.com on YouTube. We have actually got a tutorial specifically with that smoke. So I was leading up to that. I was hoping you were going to do that. After the map, after the match. 11-11 now. Again, just continual trades here in this final map. No clear winner just yet. Fast frags coming in from Penta, looking to rush the site, but Flamey has other ideas, just doing as, doing just as well as Dennis did in the B area. Three frags for Flamey now, as uh, his teammate Angel in vents runs distraction floor. Four frags for Flamey, almost gets an ace. Kucha comes in with the save, and uh, what a huge round for Flamey. 22 and 13 right now. He is top fragging for the Hellraiser side. He is top fragging across the whole map. So we go into round 24. Hellraiser is now with a one round advantage. Penta with the force by Crystal saving money because he wants that orb. Although I don't like to show favoritism towards the team, Flamey has, I have to say so far from what we've seen in both of these series, Flamey's been the man of the uh, day for me. He's certainly been putting in some big Holy numbers, some big kills when potatoes. needed. potatoes. Look at the damage from that nade. Was that Dennis one nade? Crystal next. That was one nade. Wow. In the face, baby. But Penta don't care about no nades. Two frags here. And again, the trades, are, it's like no one can string rounds together here. They're just annihilating each other, taking turns. 
Now it's Hellraiser, there's only two people remaining. Got one of their uh, stars, Flamey, looking to bring things back. Only going to get the pistol or crystal down as the remainder of the team charge towards the A bomb site where Dozier will have to hold. Flamey not moving from the B bomb site just yet. This rotation is going to be far too little, far too late. Dozier manages only one frag, exposing his whole body to Dennis, who gets the instant trade there. You can see uh, this is something that existence from uh, Titan does as well. When he's on the T side, he likes to pick up the silenced M4s. Stealth giving that split second advantage that may mean that all the difference. Flamey looking to save this AWP. Going to try and get an exit frag from distance here as Struggs tries to hold down the fort in case of a potential flank. But there will be none and they will exit in the right direction to avoid Flamey, for now at least. And once again, we're all even. Once again, we are. Terrorists win. I think we're going all the way with this one. Do you reckon we're going to see another overtime? It's certainly looking like we could I be. certainly hope not after all these delays. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly been a long one. It's certainly been a late night, but we I love it. I want to eat the rest of my chocolate croissant before it goes rock hard. That's your aim. I just want to make sure I get home to bed in time so I have to be up at a good reasonable time with some good sleep for lectures I tomorrow. I man. don't even know how you are going to sleep at all today. I but don't uh, think I'm going to, but it's worth it for some good CS, I right? I certainly hope you do. Now, we have another fast push here nice. from Pentar, but Hellraiser's Kuchar is going to slow them down with that frag. Moving into the day's position, tags Crystal, double peak coming in from the Penta side, but not enough to stop Kuchar, gets another frag. Finally, they, they take him down, but now only Speedy remains for the Penta side. Doesn't have the bomb either, is on the complete other side of the map, is being hunted now by the players. Angel will be leading the charge as Speedy just runs around with a nade. I think Angel heard him there, doesn't know he's holding a nade, so obviously he's going to just try and smoke him off, slow him down, get some support from his teammates. No need to give him a 1v1 when it's 3v1 in favour of Hellraiser. Speedy going to uh, re-smoke, possibly try to allow him to push if he chooses to. Going to go for a pop flash there, and a another smoke he finds, so more shenanigans to be had. We'll try to make him way to that box that you can call headshot as... Uh, if you're standing behind it, all that is showing is your head. You can crouch, and it's a bit of a stealthy position. Always needs to be checked if you start to flank as a CT. But never mind that. 13 to 12, Hellraisers now. They are one round ahead and three rounds away from winning this match. It looks like they're going to be in a good position to take round number 26 here. If things go according to script, specifically for the fact that there are two pistols in the hands of the T players of Penta and their money really isn't sitting pretty whatsoever. So they're just going for an awkward kind of forced buy here. Will it pay off? We're about to find out, but Kutcher once again, we saw him get some nice entry frags there on the A-bomb site um, with his AWP in the last round. Can he repeat it again? We're about to see. They're just going to push through the smoke here. They do not care. They're just going to try and get that mid control, and Hellraisers are going to allow them it as they make their way up towards mid. Are they going to back away and go through A main towards the A-bomb site? We're about to see, but uh, one minute on the clock. Interestingly, Kucha has rotated from the A site of last round to the B-bomb site. He's not holding an aggressive angle, though, like you would see from other AWPers such as Neo for Versus Pro when he holds B. Instead, he's holding a passive angle. Going to allow his teammates to rotate, but Hellraisers could get a two-round lead here as they have two fast frags. Bomb still in control of Penta, though, and Kucha may be in of a challenge now. Angel starting to tag down next, gets uh, two tags on him. There's the third one. He's going to be out for the count now. Kucha still holding the bomb site down, has spotted one player. That's the bomb as well. So we're going to see the rotation from the CTs as Kucha takes down Dennis. Crystal, last man standing, versus four. Not looking good for Penta right now. Went for the force buy. Did not work out for them. Now they're floating around 2,000, 2,000 and a half. While Hellraisers start to build their bank. 7,000 on Dozier, 7,000 on Kucha. They should be good for a little while here. On the other hand, though, Penta are not good whatsoever. They yeah. are really low. They've just got nothing to buy anything. They've got one P250, and that is it. It looks like they have no choice but to play for overtime now, as this eco, if they do not win, which they should not win, with four Glocks, will mean that Hellraisers are on 15. But, James, they've done it before, so they can do it again. They've managed to take it to overtime once. I think, I think Angel is trying to bounce a flash off the rim there, but didn't get the aim right and it went on to the top. Penta could get a plant here. This would be huge for them, even if they don't win the rounds. 
but uh, with Strugs, the only one remaining, 36 HP versus 3. Looking less and less likely. Gets one frag. Eight HP now. We've got Molly's coming in. Cannot plant the bomb anytime soon. If he made one mistake and tried to plant it there, who knows? That fire could have uh, got him. But oh my struck gosh, with a struck massive what? clutch for Penta. How on earth did that just happen? That was huge. He uh, keeps them uh, in this game somehow. Again, they started that round with four Glocks. I don't have any words for that i am baffled absolutely baffled as to how strugs managed to pull that off but it's players like that that can make or break a team and is that going to make penta get their motivation back up of course because Hel because sorry hellraisers have taken a few rounds in a row they are still going to be able to buy up here but angel has already been knocked down to eight hp and you've got to wonder what is that going to do to the mindset of Hellraisers here. Penta's still looking strong. Has the momentum of Hellraisers been broken after such a great start to that round? 1v3 versus a man with 34 HP. No armor. No hope. Molotov in the bomb site. How does he win that round? And he got I knocked down to know. 8 HP as well. After that, the mo another Molotov came in and knocked him down to less than 10 HP. That is bananas. And Crystal <sighs> will get wallbanged through mid onto 10 HP. Angel, though, with 8 HP, so things looking ropey for both teams here. But it's going to be uh, the onus will be on Pentar to try and win this round as they have 45 seconds remaining. And they have no map control whatsoever. They're trying to poke around mid at the moment, possibly heading towards A main, starting to emerge out of mid now. But two CTs on both sides. Angel getting an important frag there with next to no HP trade coming in, but the CTs will have a bit of extra time to rotate. And goes an important smoke just to cover off that area so that nobody from CT spawn is going to spot them. But have a look at these positions. Doshia lifted up on top of the truck there, I do believe it is. And he's going to try and find one, but Adren's going to finish things off there on Dennis to even things up into a three-on-three -three situation. Bomb has been planted. And uh, they do have kits only in the hands of Flamey, though. Dashi's going to get one. Dashi's going to get two. Lovely kills coming in. Struggs has got to try and do it again. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was hoping to build some hype there. So LOL. You could see. TARDIS. Uh, I was hoping building some hype around Struggs getting another 1v3 clutch would be good. At but, least uh, it wasn't the last round. Yeah, go TV lag. Shout out to go That's TV. It. Thanks, go TV. We love you, but we hate you at the same time. Okay, so we have the force from Pentar. They have three pistols, an AK, an AWP. Speedy doesn't even have any armor. This is... Uh, I mean, this is, this is the... Uh, the Chewy giveaway right here. <laughs> Whatever you can find. Meanwhile, we have the double orcs coming out for Hellraisers. And with the money they have... Wow. If they lose this round, we may reluctantly be going to overtime. Tags on Dennis and Speedy. Speedy again, 30 HP. Just running around with the Tech 9, but he cannot afford to take any damage whatsoever. Strugs is in a position to try and get a sneaky shot onto someone should mid be pushed by the CTs. Oh. Angel... I was just about to say, has to be careful about this flank. And uh, that pick is going to get the Penta side on overdrive. They're going to rush towards a main. Those who are in a position to try and get a frag. There's the first one. He's moving onto the site now to try and stop the plant coming in. You see the... Did he get that shot? Oh yeah, he gosh. did. He's coming, heading in his direction. Those who are doing fantastic work here, but they're going to jump straight on the box. Crystal is going to be the last man standing versus two. We've seen a 1v3 already from this team. It's not meant to be today. Hellraiser, 16 to 13.